Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report, and we are live here on YouTube. We are also live over on Rumble. And speaking of Rumble, usually when I go live, we do essentially how I like to figure it as four segments. I talk about rumors. We do a mailbag. I hit you with another segment, which, by the way, is going to be trade candidates. Then we do another mailbag, and we wrap the show up, and we head home. Well, guess what? Today you're going to get an extra video over on Rumble. So if you want to go ahead and see that, go ahead, give us a follow over on Rumble right now. And that way you're not sitting around like, wait, where, where did everyone go? Don't be that guy. Go ahead and give us a follow right now. Rumble.com slash Raiders Report. That segment's going to be coming up here in about an hour. So the fact that yesterday the Raiders voluntary workout started... Dude, it really gave me the feeling like the season is a lot closer than what it is. And, you know, I get it. You got to go through the NFL draft. Then there's, you know, June 1st, roster cuts, preseason, all this stuff still has to happen. But this is the season that I could probably say I've been here at the Raiders Report now since 2018. This is by far the most excited that I have ever been for a season. So if y'all are excited... For the Raiders' upcoming season, I want you to go ahead, spam me right now. And if you want a shout out here on today's show, the easiest ways to do it, obviously to Super Chat, but also I'm going to be giving shout outs to people over on Rumble the entire day. So, major shout out to everyone already over on Rumble. If you want an easier spot to get a shout out, hey, just click on over there and I'll give you guys a little bit of love. But I got Jim Morris, Juicehead89, Osirius, Jose Delgado, Juan Hernandez, Blaine Craig, Jeff Rogers. Jeff, my guy, he's one of the OGs around here. We got my dude also down there in the live chat. YB, Phil, Mario, Raider Nation, Phil, Jail, Jose, David, Osirius. Keep those coming in. And as always, Untouchable Raider 1960. So one of the things that we're going to be talking about here on today's show, and I just got a super chat come in from James O. That's a note for producer Sam since YouTube. YouTube's going through a little bit of a roller coaster ride right now, but I think we're okay. And remember, if you super chat, we'll put you on the show. So name a player. That the Raiders should trade. Coming up in about 30 minutes from now, I'm going to talk about five players that I could see the Raiders potentially moving on from either before the NFL draft or literally on draft night, whether that's round one, round two, round three, all the way up to round seven. But let's go ahead. Let's show our muscles here. Let's show our brain power. Name a player that the Raiders should go ahead and trade. Juicehead89 says Darren Waller. Madman Raider and Anthony Morales is going to go with Jonathan Abram. Michael says Cleveland Furl. Another person coming in here, Untouchable Raider, says Furl. I also see Denzel Good down there in the comments. Josh Jacobs from Matt Arnold. Trade Brian Edwards and Jonathan Abram. Okay, and then great work, Sam, from my dad. So shout out to my dad for watching. Let's go to James O. Actually think... Hang on, shout Sam. Out to, shout out to Mitchie Renz. Richie Renz. <laughs> Mitchie Renz. <laughs> Mitchie Renz and Richie Renz. All right, actually. I was looking at Mitch when I said that. I think the Raiders made trade down, almost changed my name to Where's My Vibe Raider. I mean, that is an elite name. You should absolutely change your name to that. that uh, I almost want to make a t-shirt about that. However, in terms of trading down, I also don't think this is a terrible idea. The Raiders want to be able to build depth. They want to be able to go out there and fill a lot of those holes that they still have on the roster. However, I really truly believe that Josh McDaniels and Dave Ziegler, if they see a player that they really like on their board and he starts falling down the draft, it wouldn't surprise me if they try to package up some picks maybe even next season to try to go up in this year's draft because this one, after all, is in Las Vegas and this team is absolutely in win-now mode. Speaking of the NFL draft, will the Raiders trade up in the 2022 NFL draft? Why for yes or N for no? The reason why this rumor or topic has a lot of legs is because a few weeks ago, right after the Raiders went ahead and they traded for Devontae Adams, Dave Ziegler essentially was like, man... I wish I had a pick in the first and second round. And not that he didn't like the Devontae Adams deal. He was one of the front runners and going ahead and making the deal happen. It was more the drafts in Vegas. I'm a first time GM over here. I would like to be able to have a first or second round pick, which my answer to that would be, obviously, anybody would want to go ahead and do it. However, when he said that, a lot of people were like, oh, could the Raiders potentially trade up? And one of the segments that you're going to see here on today's show is I have five trade ideas involving 
Raiders players where you could go from, instead of having your first pick at 86 overall, can you get into the second round? And I was even able to get a little bit ballsy and develop a trade where the Raiders get up into round one. We're giving up a lot. But, yes, I was able to do it, and that's going to be a topic coming up here on the show, and it's actually going to be a, the topic that you see on Rumble After Hours today. So if that's what you're interested in seeing, five crazy trade ideas that the Raiders could do to try to get up into round two, to try to get up into round one, the link is below, rumble.com slash Raiders Report. Go ahead, watch the show over there. That way when I go over there, you're already sitting down having a good time. But Joe LG, he says... No, not going to happen. Bounce77G is saying, yes, they could do it. Uh, or says, yes, they will trade up to the second round. Max is going to go with a yes. Juan Hernandez says, yes. Danny says, your hair is very black today. Is it? I don't, I mean, I think it's pretty brown. Well, no, I'll be honest. I didn't shower this morning. I woke up and just came to work. That's just the God honest truth. We got Elijah Mendez says yes. Hustle and Hooligan, no, no, no. No from Paul. Hey, don't be afraid. Put those votes down there. Let me know what y'all are thinking. So who's got plans this Sunday? What are you doing? Is anybody doing anything on Sunday? I know it's Easter out there, and I'm going to be coming into the studio. I'm going to be working on Easter. So my only thing is, will you guys hang out with me? I I'm going to be doing a special live show, which... I do find it funny. I scheduled a live show on Sunday at April 17th, okay, at 4 p.m. Wait, no, yeah, 4 p.m. Central, so 5 p.m. Eastern time, 2 p.m. Pacific. And everyone was like, why is this show scheduled for four days from now? It's because I'm going to do a special live show on Sunday. So if you guys haven't subscribed, if you could actually go ahead and set a reminder. Also, whoever's running the live community chat, if you could throw that link in the comment section, that way people can go ahead and click on my live show that is scheduled on Sunday. Then all you got to do is go ahead and click that reminder button. That way people can go ahead and tune in. But I have a big Raiders announcement. Really excited about something, and I want to tell you, I, I just want to tell you guys on Easter. Hopefully that's okay. So uh, Michael A. says, working. David says, I will be there. I'm drinking Fireball from Terrence. Terrence, I don't have any fireball on me in the studio. It's in the back room there. But if you guys want to rip a few shots, maybe we can go ahead and do so. Now, one of the other topics that we're going to talk about here today is also going to be around two big-name free agents, Stephon Gilmore and the Honey Badger, two names that we continue to talk about. Both of these players have recently been linked to the Raiders, and I'm going to go ahead and talk about what the most recent linking is, the most latest news and rumors, and tell you what you need to know. Uh, somebody said, Mitch, you're getting married. No, not getting married. <laughs> but, hey, you never know. I'd trade my wife and her dildo to go get those guys. That's from Chris. Interesting, Chris. We got some TM. Somebody says, Cap. Um, let me know who you guys would rather have. Who's the better fit in Vegas? Type TM for Tyron Matthew or SG for Stephon Gilmore. Untouchable Raiders going to go with the Honey Badger. Both from Danny. Hell yeah from Andrew. We got Bill Holloway says, SG. For Gilmore, Ryan Durs, we have uh, Ryan Durs, SG, BB Raider, TM down there in the comments. Mike Glennon, no, we don't want Mike Glennon. Uh, keep those votes coming in. We got 462 people watching. If you haven't liked the video yet, please go ahead and do so. So what's going to be coming up here on the Raiders Report on YouTube, you guys are going to see the latest news and rumors. We're going to be doing two mailbags and also Raiders trade candidates. If you're already over on Rumble, shout out to you, you're also going to see my five Raiders trade ideas. And that's going to be how, how can the silver and black get up into the second round? How can the Raiders get up into even the first round? And yes, if you want to get in the first round, I'm just going to warn you, you're going to have to give up a lot. I ran these through the trade value chart as well, so all the deals are accurate. So what's going to be coming up live? The latest news, the latest rumors, and then we're also going to get into some trade candles. So if you like trades, you're going to enjoy today's show. That's all coming up right now here on the Raiders Report.
Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report. And coming up here on today's show, we're going to talk about the latest news. And the, a lot of the news happened more of yesterday, but I'm excited for the NFL season, and I'm excited for voluntary camp. Plus, we're going to break down some stuff going on around the Honey Badger and Stephon Gilmore. They've most recently been linked to the Raiders. I'll tell you who's linking them. And then we're going to talk about four draft prospects because the Raiders are actually going to be meeting with two today. So, with the fact that voluntary training camp started yesterday, or voluntary workouts, excuse me, I got really excited. And shout out to, to Derek Carr. This dude showed up at like 5 o'clock in the morning. Also, I love the fact that Devontae Adams showed up. When your stars show up to voluntary workouts, that's the commitment to excellence that I'm looking for. That's the commitment to excellence that makes Al Davis smiling down. That's the commitment to excellence that every single Raider fan wants and sees. And you're seeing a lot of these players. Rocky Sin was there. Jonathan Abram was there. You know who also was there? Darren Waller. And I know there's been a lot of... We'll call them social media rumors out there. Oh, Darren Waller could potentially be traded this offseason. He could potentially sit out if he doesn't get a new deal. And these have been topics that I have brought up here because my job is if I get asked the question, hey, is this a possibility? There's always a possibility in the real scheme of things. However, okay, the fact that Darren Waller ended up showing up to voluntary workouts, I'm going to go ahead and do my best to squash this right now. Is Waller going to get traded? Zero no chucky heads, tuck rule, tuck that. If you see the rumor origin, which I show on every show, it's the internet. I don't know who first started it, but you know what? I'm going to go ahead and try to end it. Waller showed up, and he still might want a new deal. Hell, I still think he deserves a big-time pay raise. But if you're showing up to voluntary workouts, why would you sit out during regular training camp? And I think it just shows Waller is a professional, Waller wants to be a Raider, and Waller isn't going anywhere. So the fact that our star showed up, all I want to do is this. Type down in those comments right now, JWB for just win, baby, because I love the commitment to excellence that you're seeing. And one of the things that I love last season, and you know, you can pick apart a lot of things about last year, however, the Raiders bonded together as a locker room. The fact that Crosby's showing up after his big dude payday, after him becoming a soon-to-be father. You're seeing all the players do the right things, and you combine that with Josh McDaniels, Dave Ziegler, somebody who's going to bring in this exact same work ethic. It's going to be a recipe for success. So go ahead and type JWB. Some news that happened yesterday. Not only did the Raiders go out and sign Tayshawn Bauer, which I broke down from my home with my dog Chuck the Pup, they also re-sign Roderick Teamer Jr. to a one-year deal. And I actually liked a lot of Teamer last season. He was only able to play in 10 games, had some injury issues, but he's a good special teams dude. And he provides some depth in the secondary. Teamer was brought over because I thought he was a Gus Bradley player, somebody who's worked with Bradley in the past. But if anytime you see secondary player who might not be a starter, but they have a lot of special teams value, that's a good thing. And guess what? Patriots old coaches, they like that stuff too. So as it stands right now, this is the Raiders' safety depth chart. You have Abram as your starting strong safety. Merrick is your free safety. I actually wouldn't be surprised if you see a lot of Merrick and Harmon out there on the field. Roderick Teamer, Tyree Gillespie, Dalen Levitt. You're starting to build a little bit more depth. Here's my question, though, to everyone out there because I do think if there was one player that gets impacted by this move the most, it might actually be Jonathan Abram. And earlier today, the first team that went ahead and they it was the Seattle Seahawks, they gave Noah Fant his fifth-year option. Jonathan Abram is eligible for a fifth-year option. Josh Jacobs eligible, eligible for a fifth year. Cleveland Furl, if you were drafted in the first round of 2019, you are eligible. We know that Abram isn't going to get that fifth-year option, and this new coaching staff, they didn't draft Jonathan Abram. They don't owe him anything. So not only did they bring back Dale Levitt, not only did they go out and get Deron Harmon, not only did they go out and also get somebody like Roderick Teamer, who does remind me of a very similar skill set of Abram. Teamer's a better, we'll say, coverage player, but Abram's probably better against the run. Who's the better safety for the Raiders? Type JA for Jonathan Abram, or I want you to go ahead and type RT for Roderick Teamer. Coming up here now on the Raiders Report, we covered the news there. Let's now talk about free agency. And sure, a lot of the buzz around free agency has absolutely died down. But I know this, 
If there's still two players that get mentioned to me, whether it's in my DMs or whether I get added on Twitter, Instagram the most, it's Tyron Matthew and it's Stephon Gilmore. Well, guess what? If anything happens around either of those players, we'll keep you up to date, guys. Subscribe for the best Raiders coverage on the internet. If the Raiders make a move, like go out and sign one of those guys, we will go live. We will party. We are going to have a good time. If I find more information, I promise you, you'll be the first ones that find out. So hit that subscribe button. Turn on those notifications. That way you don't miss a thing. So out of the Honey Badger and Gilmore, we're first going to talk here about Stephon Gilmore. And the reason is Bleacher Report released an article, or Pro Football Post, excuse me, released an article, the best landing spots for PFF's top remaining free agents. Gilmore was in fact linked to the Raiders, and PFF projected him to get a one-year, $12 million contract with $8.75 million guaranteed. The way, that this con or the way that this article was structured was they linked all the potential destinations, and then they said, okay, one best spot. The best spot for Gilmore, according to PFF, guys aren't going to like it. Yeah, it's the Kansas City Chiefs, which I can actually understand because if I'm Gilmore, I want to take a one-year deal, go to a team that I know can win. He's going to have a lot of publicity because of the AFC West. The other team is mentioned, Arizona Cardinals. They desperately need a corner. Baltimore Ravens, they're going to be looking for their Marcus Peters replacement. And then you have the Las Vegas Raiders with all the connections between Josh McDaniels, the old Patriots coaches, and then Jordan Simmons, I believe is his name, the Raiders defensive backs coach who was previously with the Carolina Panthers. So does this mean that he's coming to the Raiders? I don't know. Does it mean he's coming to the Chiefs? Maybe. All I know is this. We're keeping you up to date. We will go ahead and talk about Tyron Matthew in a second, but if you're watching us live, yo, we're going to be doing an exclusive video over on Rumble. So go ahead and give us a follow right now, rumble.com slash Raiders Report. If you're watching this on a later date, one of my biggest sells on why you should go ahead and give us a follow on Rumble is not only going to get extra content, but when I think about when I was a kid and I would listen to podcasts or even now when I go and take Chuck for a, a walk, I'm trying to watch YouTube or listen to YouTube and as soon as I exit out of the screen, the show stops. If you're over on Rumble, you can listen to the Raiders report, put it in your pocket, close your screen, and it will play in the background like a podcast. So if you're doing something else and you get sick and tired of closing your phone and the show stops... Go ahead, or yeah, if you don't want to see me, go ahead and give us a follow on Rumble, rumble.com slash Raiders Report. Somebody who I'd love to see in silver and black, and fun fact, shout out to Max Crosby, Honey Badgers are actually silver and black. But again, in that same exact article that I just talked about was Stephon Gilmore, the best landing spots for PFF's top remaining free agents. Gilmore was ranked two on that list, the Honey Badger was ranked three. Matthew was also linked to the Raiders. Their projected contract was three years 30 million with 20 million guaranteed. I do think that the reason why that he's getting more money and more longer years is because he's just been healthier, though Gilmore is getting more money because it's a shorter term deal. In terms of the top destinations, PFF thought that the Philadelphia Eagles made the most sense. Then it was the Indianapolis Colts, the Las Vegas Raiders, the New Orleans Saints, and the Pittsburgh Steelers. And a show, I believe at this point now, it's like last week or maybe even two weeks ago on Chat Sports, I said that I could see him going back to New Orleans. If I was a betting man, I would bet on the Honey Badger going back to New Orleans, but as long as he's linked to the Raiders, hey, man, we're going to talk about it. So who's the better fit in Vegas? Because it's not always about who's the better player. It's about who is the better fit for Patrick Graham for this defense and all the other holes that we have. Is it Stephon Gilmore? You can go ahead and type SG. Is it Tyron Matthew? I want you to go down to the comments section right now and type TM. I love Gilmore. I love everything that he brings. But I really truly believe that the Honey Badger gives you more versatility. And when I hear Patrick Graham talk, when I really think of all the great Patrick Graham defenses that I've seen, the key word there is versatility. It's not that I don't like Stephon Gilmore. I do. I like him a lot. But then the other thing I'll say is this. How many times have the Raiders gone out and signed a big name free agent and either A, they get banged up, or C, you just can't even rely on him? And I don't really want that. I know. I skipped B. It's fine. So the Honey Badger, he's just been healthier. And he's played in a lot more games than Stephon Gilmore. So if it comes down to me splitting hairs, I'm going to split hairs on a dude who has shown me that he's been able to be healthier, adds a little bit more versatility to this defense, and you can use him in a lot of different ways. That's why I'm going to go ahead and take the Honey Badger as the better option. But even though we're talking about them and it's, what, April 12th? I don't think either of these guys end up signing until 
after June 1st. Sorry, I know, it's a long time. But the reason why these two guys should wait until after June 1st, you wait until the after the NFL draft. And then June 1st is the day that a lot of teams, <coughs> like the Raiders, get extra money. The Raiders are going to get about $20 million after June 1st because they moved on from Carl Nassib and they moved on from Corey Littleton. And if you're a player and you know that you have a lot of value, Matthew's the top safety out there, Gilmore's the top corner, your value isn't going to go down. If anything, it's going to go up the longer and longer teams wait. Therefore, you go ahead and you make the move after June 1st. So I do have a big announcement that I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to be live on Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern Time, 2 p.m. Pacific. So if you are subscribed, shout out to you. If you haven't already, there's going to be a link in the comments. There's going to be a link in the description. You can click on that link and then click the reminder bell. That way, when I go live on my big announcement Sunday, it's uh, I'm, I'm really excited. We've, we've waited a long time. And it's going to be something that if you're a loyal Raiders Report watcher, you're going to be really excited about. So we're going to do a special live show on Sunday. Set a reminder, 5 p.m. Eastern Time, 2 p.m. Pacific. All right, so we talked about the latest news. We talked about free agency. Let's now talk about the 2022 NFL Draft and the latest buzz going on. And I'll tell you what. I saw this news uh, bit come out this morning, and I got excited. Luckily, you can't see underneath the table because I love Tariq Wool. This is one of my favorite prospects, and <laughs> Sam just said perf. You know what? I don't care. Sure. I'll, 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 take the, I'll take the heat here because Tariq Woolen is a player that I would love to see in a Raiders helmet. This guy is an athletic specimen, and to be honest, if the Raiders were to take Woolen, I really think that Al Davis would just be smiling, smiling, man. I mean, it would just be the ultimate move. This guy is big at six foot four, 205 pounds, and he is just an athletic freak. He ran a 4.2640 at the combine. Now, there's some NFL scouts that I've talked to that said, well, it could go in round one. That would surprise me. I've heard some people say round two is a possibility. Obviously, you're hoping that you can get him at round three, pick 86. However, if you're, if you're a coach and you're like, this is the ultimate, like, player project because if he turns out puts in good technique and gets good coaching he can turn into a hell of a player but he's really just an athlete can you work with just an athlete because he's not ready to play in the NFL with his current technique but I also said the same thing about Nate Hobbs let's go to the next player here and it's Mario Goodrich and Vegas is hosting Goodrich for a top 30 visit very physical corner. I actually talked about him yesterday on my Raiders report show because ESPN projected them to go uh, a mock draft, and they took Goodrich, I believe, in round four, if my memory serves me correctly. But he's physical, and he's not afraid to tackle, which I like. He was a team captain. He ran a 4.5240, and he's definitely built more for zone coverage. However, when I think about cornerbacks at the NFL level, his feet are slow, he can't get his hips turned the way that I want, and he's a below average athlete at the NFL level. So depending on what you're deciding to do here with him, I would much rather pass on Goodrich because I've heard some people say that he could go in round three. I actually wouldn't take him until round five. So if the Raiders can get him in round five, that's fine. If not, I'm okay not getting him. Another player that the Raiders are going to be hosting for a top 30 visit is Jaden Peavy, and good athlete. He's got the size, he's got the strength. My biggest concern, and actually one of the reasons why I'm a little bit curious to see why the Raiders brought in PV, is because a lot of the notes on him and some of his old coaches have even said, they don't know how much he loves football. That doesn't really sound like somebody who I could see Josh McDaniels or Dave Ziegler potentially bringing into this locker room. And he's also controlled, or has struggled controlling his weight. I mean, he ran a 5.3. He's six foot six, 315. He's a big boy, right? Fresh out of Bel Air. 43 tackles, seven tackles for loss, two sacks and a forced fumble last season for the Aggies. But when I see the notes on him from coaches who know him well, and I see they don't know if he loves football or not, that's a major red flag for me because every time that I've ever gone back and I see notes of they don't know how much he loves football, it's usually not the best thing. Before I talk about the last player, and actually a guy who just got brought up, if you guys haven't already, please go ahead and give us a follow over on Locals as well. We're giving you a whole bunch of exclusive content. I dropped a mock draft yesterday made by Locals content creators. We also go live at least once a week, two exclusive videos, Mornings with Mitch, which is like an idea that pops into my head, and I'm like, all right, man, 
let's just go ahead let's talk about it and it's also giving you guys a little bit more power so if you love the daily videos here on YouTube and you're just like I just want more Raiders content in the offseason I got you covered, man. So it's free to become a member, and you can watch some videos for free. But if you want just all the videos, all the content, it's $10 a month or $100 for the year. We give you the first two months for free. Go ahead and join RaiderSport.Locals.com. Another player that I talked about yesterday because in the latest ESPN full seven-round mock draft, curious if they had an inside source, EJ Perry is now uh, coming in for a visit with the Raiders. And this was another player who... In that ESPN mock, the Raiders ended up taking in round seven at pick 227. Um, I'm not excited about it. Like he's at, he's got average size, average arm strength. He looked halfway decent against Ivy League competition, but his mechanics are not good, and he's an inconsistent inconsistent passer. And if you're an inconsistent passer in the Ivy League, I wonder how consistent you're actually going to be in the National Football League. Six foot two, 210 pounds. He ran, I believe, like a 4.6540, 3,000 passing yards, 23 touchdowns, 14 interceptions. My cousin, who used to play football in the Ivy League as a quarterback, actually, I, I texted him before today's show, and I was like, hey, man, can you give me any notes on this kid? Can you make some contacts? He said that he actually heard that he's actually not the best quarterback that's come out of Brown since he's graduated. I don't know another quarterback that's come out of Brown, but I also know this. Josh McDaniel said about a week ago that he likes finding quarterbacks and trying to turn them into projects because teams are more willing to give up more draft picks and more draft capital for projects if they end up hitting. So if you go round seven here with E.J. Perry, I wouldn't like it. I personally think he could be, though, a UDFA. So E.J. Perry, we talked about news. We talked about rumors. If you made it this far in the video, then go ahead and smash that like button. All right, y'all, will the Raiders trade up in the NFL draft? Type that Y for yes or and for no. If you're watching this live right now, we're getting ready to get into a mailbag, and then we're going to get into five players that the Raiders can trade. And over on Rumble and Rumble only, we're going to be doing five big-time trade ideas for the Raiders to get into round two and round one. But let's go ahead and let's give some shout-outs here. We got 813 people watching. Will the Raiders trade up in the NFL draft? Let me get a sip of water. I think it's water. Yep, water. And then uh, we'll go ahead and get into today's mailbag. I got Mo. Mo, that is a hell of a name, man. You will get me. You almost get me every time. A man says no. We got Bill. No. Raider Mike. No. We have Paul. No. I mean, I haven't seen a single yes yet. Oh, there's one from Oscar. We got David says yes. Giovanni Tejada says no. Alan Reyes is going to go with yes. And right now, I would say 85% of the votes are for no. And the correct, or there's not actually a correct answer. The more likely answer is, of course not. But if players slide down, hey man, we, we've seen some crazy things happen, especially this soft season. So if you want an extra show today, all you got to do is go ahead and give us a follow on Rumble at rumble.com slash Raiders Report. If you want a shout out, shout out to Mario Raider Nation, and then shout out to Man 13 If you guys go over on Rumble right now and spam Raiders throughout today's live show, I'm just going to go ahead and give some shout outs. So once this live sh show on YouTube is done, then I'm going to go over to Rumble only. We're going to end the show here, and I'm going to do five big-time trades that the Raiders could end up making to try to get into the second. Hang on, I got burp. And get into the first round. So that's what's going to be happening here. So if you guys want more content, an extra live segment, rumble.com slash Raiders Report. So before we get into the trade segments, before we get into the crazy trade ideas, if you got a question, if you got a statement, if you just want to get on the show, you can go ahead and super chat or you can use hashtag Raiders. So for the next 12, 15 minutes or so, I'm going to answer all y'all's questions. So if you send in a super chat earlier, like I see ones coming in from Los Cameron, Dick so solid, Dixon, Elsie, Raider, Anthony, David, Cameron, Michael Avilia. I see y'all. We will get you on today's show. So mailbag time. So super chat to skip the line. Or you can go ahead and use hashtag Raiders because for the next 15 minutes, I'm answering your questions. Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report. Mitchell Renz here, ready to answer all y'all's questions. We did this show during our live video on Tuesday when we were live on YouTube and when we were live on Rumble. So if you see some outdated stuff, don't shoot the messenger. Let's go to the very first Super Chat coming in here from Los Banos Tire Shop. Waller won't be traded. I'll put money on it. 
I would probably double down on that as well. The Raiders wouldn't be smart to move on from Darren Waller, and he showed up for voluntary workouts, and the Raiders team is going to run a lot of two tight end sets. If you're showing up for voluntary workouts, I'm not worried about you sitting out. Shout out to Darren Waller for being a real one. Let's go to the next super coming in here from Cameron Sproul. Mitch, ever since the Ziegler and McDaniels hiring, we haven't heard much from Mark Davis. Will he be more hands-off this year? I hope so. Mark, you know, has been – Mark's had a good offseason this year, and I'll give him that. I wasn't crazy about the McDaniels hiring, and I don't think many people were. There was a few people, and I wasn't all that crazy about the Dave Ziegler hiring. But these guys have gone into this offseason and absolutely crushed it. And I'll be the very first one to say that I've been very impressed by how much these two have worked together. And if you're Mark Davis, you shouldn't really be that much into it. Because I think when you see a lot of these NFL franchises that struggle, their owner has got way too big of a head and he tries to control way too much. You're hiring these guys for a reason. They know more football than you do, Mark. So the fact that we haven't heard from them, I think that's a really good thing. Let's go to Zoe365, shout out. Should the Raiders bring back Mo Hurst? Ah, dude, so I, I actually like that you asked me this because when I saw that Maurice Hurst was released by the San Francisco 49ers, I went ahead and I tweeted it out. Bring back Mo Hurst. When I look at a lot of the Raiders' defensive tackles that they have right now, I see good run stoppers. You need somebody that can get after the quarterback. Is Mo undersized? Yes, absolutely. But I was always a fan of Mo Hurst. So if the Raiders wanted to go ahead and bring him back, I would do it. I also know that there's a lot of people on social media that want the Raiders to bring back Darius Phylon. And I know Phylon's out there on Twitter. He's sending stuff out left and right. I thought what Phylon did last season, he was really good. But you have to remember, he ended the season on IR. He was literally carted off. He had a season-ending injury. I don't know if he's 100% healthy. I don't know if he's even going to be ready for week one. On top of that, the only seasons that he's ever been good have been in Gus Bradley defenses. You go back and you look at every other year, Darius Phylon and a not-Gus Bradley system, it hasn't been pretty whatsoever. So what are your thoughts here, y'all? Should the Raiders bring back Mo Hurst? I want you to go ahead and type that Y for yes or... You can go ahead and type your end for no. It obviously depends on contract. It obviously depends on his health because one of the reasons why the Michigan product fell so far in the draft, he was a first-round prospect, fell all the way down to round five because of that heart condition. Personally, I love what Mo brings to the table, and if he's healthy, I would welcome him more. I would more than happy be to bring him back to the silver and black. I, no, I couldn't think what I wanted to say. Let's go to Dick So. Is it Dick Solid Dixon? I always want to say Dick So Solid Dixon. But that, that just ain't it. Would you rather get a fart or draft a right tackle you like for the future? I, I saw an opportunity and I went for it. A free agent right tackle. Sam didn't like it. Grade the joke. Or draft a right tackle. If you're telling me right now I can get Daryl Williams, I'm going to go ahead and take Daryl Williams every single day of the week. He's the best right tackle available. The issue is this. You, with the draft, you just don't know, right? If Abraham Lucas slides down to pick 86... I actually like him more than I like Brandon Parker. If Daniel Falele is there, the right tackle for Minnesota, he's a good prospect. What about Tyler Smith, the kid from UT, or not UTSA, Tulsa? Another good right tackle prospect because Trevor Penning, he ain't falling around three. So if we can go out and get somebody like Darrell Williams, that's what you do because the Raiders' biggest need is still right tackle. I mean, that's the biggest need, it's right tackle. So I'd say Darrell Williams, make it happen, or hopefully one of those other players fall down, or maybe you trade up. Let's go to LC Raider, one of the OGs. Appreciate you, my dog. Mitch, I'm taking the Raiders at plus 3,500 to take it all. Do you have any future bets this year? Raiders! So it's funny. I actually put down a bet. This was, man, right after the Raiders. It was actually before the Raiders went ahead and they traded for Devontae Adams. I put down a bet on Derek Carr at plus 5,000 odds to win MVP because I said if the Raiders come out on top of the AFC West, that he has a realistic shot to go ahead and get it done. And then they went out and traded for Adams. And I could honestly say that if the Raiders win the AFC West, which right now is the best division in all of football, Carr's probably going to be the front runner for MVP. So I like this ballsy bet, but I did get DC at plus 5,000, and that was before the Adams trade. So uh, <laughs> fingers crossed there. Let's go to Anthony Morales. What up, dog? More of a need. Gilmore or, or Tyron Matthew laugh my ass off. Oh, in my, Jesus, in my opinion, the Honey Badger. 
It's been a rough, rough day already here, guys, on the Raiders Sport. I agree. I I'm going to go with the Honey Badger because of the versatility, because of everything he's able to bring. He's a lot healthier than Gilmore, though there's a part of me that one. If you could guarantee me Gilmore plays 16 games or 17 games, you have Rocky Sin, you have Stephon Gilmore, then that also probably means you're moving on from Trayvon Mullen. I'm okay with it. But I'm going to go ahead and say, yeah, it's, it's the Honey Badger. If the Raiders are able to go out and sign either of these players, if there's any big-time news or rumors, we will keep you guys up to date. And on top of all that, this might surprise some of y'all, but I also make videos over on Chat Sports as well. And if you're looking for the best NFL draft coverage on YouTube, guys, Chat Sports is going to be live for the entire draft, all seven rounds, three days from April 28th to the 30th. If you like what you see here, guess what? We're going to do the exact same thing over there and we also get the picks before you see them on television this might surprise you the internet's faster than what you see on tv so we'll not only get the picks first we also will get millions of watchers too it's a huge party it's a lot of fun so please go ahead and subscribe youtube.com slash chat sports tv and join me join the entire chat sports team because we're going to be rocking and rolling and they're long days but the days are a lot more fun and enjoyable when it's 42 hours of just nonstop NFL draft coverage. So please go ahead and subscribe. Let's go to David Taken. We need to trade up and get a right tackle. If, if your plan is to go into the season with Brandon Parker as your right tackle, I will 100% agree with you on this because I'm sorry, I don't trust Parker at right tackle. And you can have a great offense, right? You can have all these amazing pieces. You can have Devonta Adams, Darren Waller, Hunter Renfro, Josh Jacobs, Derek Carr. If you can't, if, if your offensive line can't block, it's not going to matter. And right now, when I look at the entire offensive line, the biggest weakness is still right tackle, and it's still the area where, when I watch a lot of film on Derek. Yes, the blind side scares people, but when Derek sees pressure, he panics. And most quarterbacks panic under pressure. I wouldn't want a giant athlete running at me either, but I think it's one of the biggest reasons why you have to address that right tackle spot because you also need to be able to see what you have out of, out of Alex Leatherwood. That is if Alex Leatherwood is on the team this year. I know, it's a crazy rumor. Let's go to Cameron. I would trade up to get Woolen, then convert him to wide receiver. I love the creativity, and I, I'm going to be respectful and just say no because uh, Woolen is a good athlete. But a lot of his tape is he's actually not the best ball locator. So I would like a wide receiver who can locate the football. I get it. Six foot four, 205 pounds, runs a 4.2640. But if you're not a good pass catcher as a corner, then I don't think you're ever going to be able to play wide receiver in the National Football League. What up, Michael Avila? Is Carson Strong an option for us in round three or four? I'm going to go ahead and say I hope not. I like Carson Strong as a prospect. If I was Carson Strong and I was his team, I would hopefully – get drafted by the New York Giants, go behind Daniel Jones, play with Brian Dable, because I thought Brian Dable did a lot of great work with Josh Allen, and Carson Strong is a lesser version than Allen to me. He's not nearly as mobile, but he has a big-time arm, and he's got a very strong arm. The only reason why I don't want the Raiders to do it is because they want to compete now. Like, you only have five picks this year, and the Raiders, want to, I want them to use that round three. I want them to use that round four pick and trying to find players that can help us win right now. Carson Strong is not going to help us win now, next year, and probably even two years from now. If you want more videos, yes, I said it, more Raiders Report videos. You got a question? Join us live. Remember, I go live every single Tuesday, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Pacific. So hit that subscribe button. Turn on those notifications, and that way you can join me every single week, and that way you can get your Raiders fixed. I got you covered. We're the number one most watched Raiders show on YouTube for a reason. Let's go to Willie Raids. Trade Trey Von Mullen for a third, yes or no? Yes, in a heartbeat. Here's the issue. You're not getting a third-round pick for Trey Von Mullen. I know the Raiders drafted him in round two, number 40 overall. I would say right now if you could get a fourth-round pick, that would even surprise me. I would say an NFL team would more than like The Raiders would more likely trade him for a fifth. If a guy like James Bradbury is going for a fifth or maybe sixth, I get it. His contract's a lot different. But, yes, third-round pick in a, in a freaking heartbeat. Let's go to Christopher Leonard. Mitch! Mitch, is OBJ a possibility for wide receiver two? FAB, FTB, only the real ones know. Also, you're going to be in Scranton this summer. Let's get a beer. Scranton, no, Chris. However, I will be in the Poconos, which uh, I'm going to be. Fr it's I, I actually don't know how close it is. It's kind of close. What? 
No, the Poconos is in Pennsylvania, Sam. Uh, I'm going to be in the Poconos for my buddy's bachelor, bachelor party, and that's going to be from June 2nd to June 5th. So if you're near the Poconos June 2nd to June 5th and you want to come grab a beer with me and some of my good friends, you know, as far as I'm concerned, the only, I'll say this. you got to buy the groom a beer. If, you, if you're willing to buy the groom some drinks, then you can come party with us because I know the group of guys and we're gonna we're gonna have a we're gonna have a good time. But OBJ is a possibility, sure, potentially. He actually still think the highest odds are for him to go to a team is still the Raiders. But uh, OBJ is another name that I don't see going anywhere until after June first. Let's go to Tyler Fireblade. Does the Raiders trading their first and second next year get us a first this year? Yes. I mean, so a lot of times the way that NFL teams look at the value of picks, if a 2023 first is the equivalent to a second round pick this year. So a first and a second round pick next year absolutely would be worth a first round pick this year. It's just, uh, I, I also don't know why the Raiders would do that. I, I actually personally wouldn't do it. But if you're watching this live, we got some crazy trade ideas coming up here in a little bit. Let's go to TikTok. Tiny man. Could the Raiders draft Marcus Jones in round three? Marcus Jones is another player that I've talked about numerous times on the show and also was a player that the Raiders met with. If your idea is to get Marcus Jones and put him as a corner, that's not a good idea. Like, Jones is 5'8", 170 pounds, corner out of uh, Houston. He's just an athletic specimen. If you take him in round three, you better use him as your Swiss Army knife. And it scares me because... The amount of times I've used that term on this show, whether that be Tanner Muse, Swiss Army Knife, that was a dull blade. Lynn Bowden Jr., Swiss Army Knife, that blade we didn't even get to see in Las Vegas. Like, Marcus, though, is a player where I think he has a lot higher upside as being a great special teamer and a player that you use on offense as a kind of like a Tavon Austin style of athlete. You use him that way because if you try to use him as a corner, you're going to be disappointed. Now, guys, we got a big-time announcement on Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern time, 2 p.m. Pacific. So if you guys want to come ahead and join my live show, please go ahead and do it. 5 p.m. Eastern time, 2 p.m. Pacific. I got a big old announcement that I want to share with the Raiders Report. With everyone who's watching, with all of our loyal subscribers, the link to the live show, in fact, it, the show's already scheduled. So if you're watching this, the show's already scheduled. So you can actually go ahead, click the remind button. That way when I go live on Sunday during Easter, you're like, oh yeah, I got the reminder. I'm going to come in. I'm going to join the show. A lot of big news. A lot of big news. That's all I'm going to say. Let's go to Christopher Leonard. Mitch, Mitch, do we pick up Jacobs after the year or no? If you're talking about his fifth-year option, you actually have to make that choice. I believe by May 2nd is the day. It's May 2nd or May 3rd, and I don't know why the days get confusing to me. But the, the dude who's most likely to get it is Jacobs. You're not going to do it with Furrow. You're not going to do it with Abram. If you do pick up Jacobs' fifth-year option... It's $8.5 million. Not that I don't love Josh Jacobs. I just don't believe in paying my running backs a lot of money when I see some of the talent that you can always bring in from the NFL draft. Jacobs is good. He's got a long injury history. I hope that the Raiders don't do it, but I also wouldn't be surprised if they did because he's a good running back. Let's go to straight music. you rather have Crabtree or Edwards? Brian Edwards, it's not even close. Like, I get it, and I'm a very, I'm very tough on Brian because I had high expectations for him, and Brian was an athletic guy, showed out in training camp. I actually got to watch Brian live, and I talked to some Raiders players who also practiced next to Edwards, and they're like, this guy's incredible. The hype was there. The issue was this. Brian needed another star receiver next to him, maybe even two or three, to be able to create separation and get open because once he was made a focal point in trying to stop, he wasn't good enough to get separation. Michael Crabtree, love him. He did a lot of good things. He's just washed up at this point, y'all. If you want more exclusive videos, who knows? Maybe I'll talk about old Raiders players that we could bring back into the silver and black. Might even see Donald Penn in there. We'll go ahead and do that over on Locals. But if you just want more questions, if I don't get to your question on a live show, I try not to answer so many on Instagram anymore because I want people to ask me questions on Local. So if you're like, wait a minute, Mitch, you're not answering my question on IG, it's because I want you to ask me over on Locals because I just get a lot over on IG. So if you haven't seen your question today, you can always DM me over on Locals, RaidersReport.Locals.com. Osiris Serrano. Osiris? I don't, I don't. Is that what it is? Osiris? We should take Crumb from Kent State in the seventh round. He has nice touch to his deep ball. So 
I know who you're talking about. Um, here's the thing, guys. I don't want the Raiders to draft a quarterback, and that might be an unpopular opinion for some people, but I just don't want them to do it. You have Nick Mullins, and you have Garrett Gilbert. Neither of these quarterbacks are going to compete with Derek Carr, and I get it. It's a seventh-round pick. What do you have to lose? I just would rather you go out and try to find other players at other needs because quarterback, to me, isn't a major need for this team. So you're going to take a fourth quarterback. What are you going to do? He's, he's more than likely not going to make the roster. I would say let's hype up Nick Mullins. Let's hype up Garrett Gilbert. And then if you want to move on from one of those guys, get some extra draft picks later on, then let's go ahead and do it. What up, Daniel? Mitch, Mitch, will Carr stick to what he said about buying Tay a car if he comes to the Raiders? Tay said he feels Ferrari-ish or downplay to Rolls-Royce. I'll know this, uh, Carr can afford it. So <laughs> I think if, if he wants a Ferrari, if he wants a Rolls-Royce, it wouldn't surprise me if he did it. I don't know if DC is going to do it, but I also know this. I wouldn't be surprised if Carr didn't, or if maybe they were like, hey, I don't know if it's a good look, considering the fact of everything that's happened in the past around some big time news and rumors here with the Raiders, but I'm, uh, I'm totally on board for it. Let's go to the next super. It's coming in here from Ivan. Is there a wide receiver in the draft better than Brian Edwards? I mean, how much time do you have? I could, I could probably name 10 receivers in the draft that I'd rather have over Brian Edwards, and that's not a knock on Edwards. It's just I saw this past season that Edwards isn't good enough to be a wide receiver one. I actually don't even think he's good enough to be a wide receiver two. I would put him in this wide receiver three category slash red zone option. So, yes, there's plenty of receivers that are better than Brian Edwards. All right, that you think that the Raiders should go out and potentially sign this offseason, and I get it. Like, when you talk about a lot of the moves that the Raiders could potentially make, sure, there's a lot of names out there. And what you're going to be seeing here on today's show is I'm going to talk about some trade candidates, and then after the trade candidates video, we're going to go ahead and do another mailbag. So if you see some of these names that are getting mentioned, ask me questions about them in the mailbags. I like free agency questions. I like trade questions. I like draft questions. But what I want to know from the 700 people watching, we got 300 likes on this bad boy right now. Let me know a player that you think the Raiders should go out and sign. Juan Hernandez, Stephon Gilmore, Tyron Matthew from Amon. Over on Rumble, we have M. Solomon 05. Shout out to you. Born Raider 66. If you want a shout out right now here on the Raiders Report, Go over to Locals right now at rumble.com slash Raiders Report and go ahead and spam Raiders. The reason also why you should do it, because after our live show here on YouTube, after our live show here on YouTube, we're going to go over on Rumble. We're going to do a Rumble after hour show, breaking down five trade ideas that the Raiders could do to try to get into round two, to try to get into round one. And I'm just going to tell you, you're going to see some names on there that might upset you. But the objective of the show is to try to get into round two and then to get into round one. So if you want to shout out right now here on the Raiders Sport, go over to Rumble, rumble.com slash Raiders Sport. Click on that link, spam Raiders. And if you want to see the upcoming show, it's going to be on Rumble and Rumble only. But if you don't, hey, that's uh, your decision. I just hope that you want more Raiders content because that's what it's all about. Coming up right now here on the Raiders Sport, we're going to get into some Raiders trade candidates. I got five players that I could see Las Vegas potentially moving on from. No, not that I want the Raiders to move on from these players, but my job here is to be able to create content. So it's five players that the Raiders could potentially trade. That's going to be coming up now. Also, I see faces. Shout out to you for uh, spamming Raiders over on Rumble. Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Sport. Coming up here on today's show, Las Vegas Raiders trade candidates. I got five players that I could see the silver and black moving before the 2022 NFL Draft or on draft night. And spoiler alert, you're not going to see Darren Waller on here. I do not think a trade around Waller is going to happen. So what you will see is five names that I think is just being potential candidates. I'm not saying I want the Raiders to trade from them. I'm saying if you were to ask me, Mitch, give me five players you think are the most likely to get traded, that's what you're going to see here on today's show. And the first name coming up here is Josh Jacobs who was drafted number 24 overall in 2019. He is a fifth-year option candidate, $8.5 million for the 2023 season. Let's just say, hypothetically speaking, the Raiders don't want to give him his fifth-year option. Okay, so he's now at the final year of his deal. Could you potentially trade Josh Jacobs to another team that's like, you know what, we would give him a fifth-year option. He's that good of a running back. So if you're like, all right, one year left for Jacobs, or you trade him for some draft picks, 
Could be something that the Raiders are interested in. If traded, the Raiders would save $2.12 million this upcoming season. Is it a lot of money? No. Now, I will say this. The only way that I am trading Josh Jacobs is if I know for a fact that Kenyon Drake is 100% healthy. Unfortunately, I don't know if Kenyon Drake is 100% healthy, but they did restructure his contract where Drake's going to make 4.4 next year and then $1.1 million three years even after that. So you have Brandon Bolden, who you brought in, who had 41 catches last season. Yeah, I don't think Jacob Johnson's much of anything. He's just a blocker. Trey Regis doesn't excite me. Amir Abdullah is a good pass-catching running back who has some connections with Kennedy Palomal, the Raiders' running back coach. I do not want the Raiders to move on from Josh. However, the Patriots in the past have never been stuck on just using one back. They've always gone by running back by committee. So what do you think about this? What is Jacobs worth in a trade? Because it's easy to come up on a show and say, I think the Raiders could trade Josh Jacobs. That doesn't mean that you're going to get what you want because if you think you're going to get a first-round pick for him, you're crazy. Personally, I think if you think you're going to get a second-round pick, you're crazy. What I think Josh Jacobs' trade value is this. You're going to get a fourth-round pick most likely, and if you're really, really lucky, you get a third. If I was an NFL team, I wouldn't trade a third-round pick for Jacobs. Not that he's not a good talent, but you got to look at the injury history. If I'm an NFL team and a team's willing to move on from a player, I'm not going to give up a third-rounder. Fourth-round pick for Josh Jacobs is probably what you're looking at. And here's the other question, though, because I know when Jacobs is on the field, he's a hell of a back. 2019 came out as a rookie, 4.8 yards per carry, seven touchdowns, over 1,000 yards. Then in 2020, another over 1,000-yard season, struggled yards per carry, but the offensive line struggled, 12 touchdowns. This past season, I saw some good bursts, but Jacobs played really, really well at the end of the season. If you watch Jacobs' final few games, you're like, that's a top five back, and I'm not afraid to say that. That's how highly I think of Jacobs. But the idea of the show is, okay, a team that didn't draft him, a team that's not committed to him potentially, could you see them moving on to get a higher draft pick? That way, Dave Ziegler, that way, Josh McDaniels, might be able to get into round one, might be able to get into round two. Now, make sure you never miss anything going on around the silver and black, whether it's news, whether it's rumors, whether it's free agency trades, draft content. I got you covered here. We are your one-stop shop for all things going on around the Raiders. So please, if you came across today's show, if you want to know more than your friends about the Raiders, hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications. And if you are one of our 112,000 subs, take that link that you see below. Send it to a friend. Let's go to the next player coming up here for my Raiders trade candidates. And I should also mention, these players aren't in any particular order. They're just names coming up here after that. Uh, Trayvon was drafted 40th overall in 2019. So another player in the 2019 draft. He's entering the final year of his contract. And if your plan is to not keep him after this year, sometimes teams are like, all right, we know he's not going to come back next year. Why not just go ahead and get some draft capital for him? Mullen missed 12 games last year. And it seems like every single year he's been in the league, he's dealt with at least some sort of minor issues. And I also, from following him and from talking to a source that I believe, somebody actually told me that they don't know how much Trayvon loves football, which, to each their own, he's a very talented player, he's a good corner, he's a cornerback too, but if you're able to trade him, you can save $2.54 million in 2022. As it stands right now, here's your cornerback depth chart. You got Rocky Sim as your starter. You got Trayvon Mullen as a starter. However, if you go ahead and you look at some of these other, we'll call them depth chart providers, Mullen's not listed as a starter. The Raiders went ahead, they went out and they signed Anthony Averett for $4.5 million. You might not think that's a lot of money, but that's interesting to me. Also, some of the reports that came out about Nate Hobbs. One of the reports was that the Raiders think that he could potentially play outside corner. The very first move that the Raiders made this offseason they went ahead, they signed Darius Phillips, who can play in the nickel. All I'm saying is Trayvon Mullen is a good player. He has injury issues. I don't know how reliable he's going to be. And with all these rumors and reports of them linking to Stephon Gilmore, I really truly believe that you could see them bring in another corner, and that potentially means that you're trading Trayvon Mullen for a, I don't know, fourth, fifth round pick. Just something to keep in mind. If they do make a deal during the draft, Hey, guys, we're going to be live for it over on Chat Sports. So if you want the best NFL draft coverage on YouTube, subscribe today, youtube.com slash chatsportstv. That link is going to be available for you all in the comments and in the description of today's video. It's three days, non-stop 
coverage, every single pick. In fact, we get the picks before you see them on television. So set a reminder, from April 28th to April 30th, you're hanging out with the Chat Sports crew all seven rounds, and we have analysis on all on all 263, 262 picks, whatever it is. And if you like having a good time and partying like we do on the Raiders Sport, we're also going to be having a good time over there as well. So YouTube.com slash Chat Sports TV. Go ahead, subscribe. Join the number one most watched draft coverage on YouTube. Next player coming up here on my Raiders trade candidates is Brian Edwards, drafted number 81 overall in the 2020 draft. And he definitely struggled creating separation after the Henry Ruggs incident last season. The Raiders were the first team in NFL history to have four players over 200 receiving yards through the first three weeks. Brian Edwards through those first three weeks, he looked really good. Then he started to slow down. Then teams started to get more tape on him. He's also had some minor injury issues already as a young player. And when I saw his tape coming out of South Carolina, I was like, this guy's got round one talent. And I really, truly thought so. But the more and more I watch Edwards, the more and more tape that I see on him, I really, truly think if, if a defense focuses on stopping Edwards, you can really take him out of the game. And that's what you saw last year. Now, if you trade him, you don't save a lot of money. It's 793000 next season. If you wait until after June 1st, you do save over a million. But this show is based on making moves around the NFL draft. And the wide receiver depth chart that you see right now, you know Devontae's your number one. Hunter's technically your wide receiver two. You got Darren Waller as your other option there. But you also went out and you signed Robinson this offseason. Is Robinson better than Brian Edwards potentially? I saw a quote from Mick Lombardi, the Raiders' new offensive coordinator, on key traits that he looks for in outside wide receivers, and I want you to look at this very closely. The first thing we talk about in terms of receiver play is winning at the line of scrimmage, right? If you can't win at the line of scrimmage as a receiver, you're going to have a tough time, and DBs are so good now, and teams play such a variety of different coverages and different techniques, and they try to disguise. How can you release into the defense? When I watch Edwards play, he doesn't get a good release. He doesn't get off the line of scrimmage, and it's not that he's not a good route runner. He's a better athlete than he is a route runner. He's a better athlete than being able to get off the line of scrimmage, and if you have a corner who's physical enough to be able to go up against him or who's well in, or just halfway decent in coverage, Edwards isn't good enough to create separation. So if you're telling me right now, I'd be able to get a fifth round pick for Edwards. It wouldn't surprise me whatsoever if the Raiders went ahead and they accept that deal. Though, I love his upside, and I do think that year three is a big time year for receivers, especially for a guy who had a rookie year in 2020. 2020 was a shit show. Last year also was a shit show with everything that happened around the Raiders. I want them to give Brian Edwards one more shot. Let's go to another player that I actually hope that the Raiders do give another shot. But if you think that Alex Leatherwood is in a realistic trade candidate, I actually think that you're sleeping on this a little bit. Drafted number 17 overall in last year's draft. The Raiders are hoping he could play right tackle. Obviously, they had to kick him into guard. Didn't work out. This offseason, though, the Raiders' official website, and the only way the official website does it is if the coaching staff makes them do it, is they also listed him now as an offensive tackle and as a guard. And if you look at some depth charts, one specifically from ESPN, Alex Leatherwood isn't listed as a starter. Now, if traded, the Raiders are going to eat $5.87 million, which you're like, man, why the hell would you do that? You're right. I don't have a good answer why you would do it. However, if one of the objectives for you to trade one of these players is to get into round one or to potentially get into round two, if a team out there says, hey, I'll give you a third round pick right now for Alex Leatherwood, I think the Raiders would actually potentially consider it because you have Brandon Parker, who you brought back. You gave him $3.6 million extension. Uh, essentially, which in this offseason, 3.6 is below average money for a right tackle. You have Jermaine Illuminor, who you could potentially see as a right guard, and he has connections with Carmen Basillo, the Raiders' offensive line coach. Denzel Good, what if they wanted to put Denzel Good at right guard? That's a potential. What if you put John Simpson back at left guard? All I'm saying is this, if the Raiders look at this offensive line and they say Alex Leatherwood isn't a starter and you can get a third round pick for somebody who believed in Alex Leatherwood, all I'm saying is that's something you should think about. And again, I would trade him for a day two pick. Day two pick is round two, it's round three. I don't think that the Raiders get a day two pick for Alex Leatherwood, but if an NFL team came up to me right now and said day two pick, Second round, third round pick, and we have to eat $5 million for Leatherwood, I would do it. 
It might be an unpopular opinion, but I would do it. That's just my personal opinion. A uh, big announcement. Alex Otherwood is, well, he might get traded. I don't know, but that's not what the big announcement is. The, we're going to do a special live show on the Raiders report. So please set a reminder on your phone. Tell Alexa, and you know what? Hey, Alexa, set a reminder to watch the Raiders report on Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Hopefully your Alexa did that for you. But we're just going to be going live. I have a big time announcement for Raiders Report watchers that I think a lot of y'all are going to be very excited about. So go ahead, subscribe. Also, it's already scheduled on YouTube. So you can go ahead, check it out, and then click the reminder over there. The final player that we're going to be bringing up here for my Raiders trade candidates is Jonathan Abram, the safety, the strong safety. Drafted 27th overall in the first round of the 2019 draft. Fifth-year option candidate at $11.5 million for the 2023 season. And some of y'all are probably like, wait, this is the last player? Yes, it is. And I'm not going to include Cleveland Furl because I don't see a team trying to take on his contract. I do think that Jonathan Abram is an easier deal to move. And if traded, the Raiders would save $2.06 million. Not that Abram doesn't bring a lot of fire and excitement. He obviously does. He's a human hit stick, and he would have a lot of value at special teams. However... The Raiders went out and they signed Deron Harmon. One of the very first things they did this offseason was they went ahead, they brought back the gunner that Dale Levitt is in special teams. They just re-signed Roderick Teamer. You have Tyree Gillespie, who I've been told the Raiders coaching staff this year does like him a lot. Abram is bad in coverage. And when I go back and I look at a lot of the tape, the Raiders' defense last season was better without Abram. And it's just the truth. Like, He's such a liability in coverage, and in today's NFL, every time he's out there, a good offensive coordinator says, where's Jonathan Abram on the field, and they target him. It sucks because I love Abram. He's just a fun player. I want him to be able to succeed, but go back and watch the tape. The Raiders were a better defense without him. Now, I would be curious if he is on the team this year. And again, any of these players, I'm not saying they're going to get traded. In fact, I think there's a much less likely chance that any of them get traded than of one player. If Abram is on the team, I hope Patrick Graham and I hope the Raiders use him very similar to what you see the Seahawks, the way that they use Jamal Adams, or just the way that you saw Patrick Graham last season use Jabril Peppers. Keep him up near the box, let him blitz, let him play like a box safety roll, sideline to sideline. But at the end of the day, again, this is a first-round pick who you took. And if a team's willing to give me a fifth-rounder for him, I would go ahead and I would do it. So those are five players that I believe that the Raiders could trade either before the 2022 NFL Draft or on Draft Day. If you want to throw in another name, it's what the Raiders report is all about. So please, I would appreciate it. Let me know another player that you think the Raiders could trade either before the NFL Draft or on Draft Day. All right, y'all, let's go ahead and let's give some shout-outs here. I also saw a $20 super chat that came in from David Zahn. So if somebody out there in the studio could just pour me up a fireball shot, we'll do uh, we'll do fireball shots from here on out for $20 supers on the Raiders report. David, uh, much love, my man. All right, so name a player you think the Raiders could trade. Let me know. My opinion says Cleveland Furl. If a team would be willing to take on Cleve's contract, I would say yes. Uh, it, it makes a lot of sense. However, I also know this, that I, I went back and I looked at some old notes from back in 2019. The Patriots were very high. Dave Ziegler was very high in Cleveland Furl. Curious to see if the additions of like Chandler Jones, who we could actually see, Jesus, could actually see as a stand-up outside linebacker, letting Clee put his hand in the dirt could be very interesting. Also, I actually liked what I saw out of Furl being a defensive tackle, being able to get after the quarterback back in 2020. So I'm curious on what the Raiders do with Furl. We got Leatherwood from Lowell Dam. Jonathan Abram from L Raider underscore 88. Trade the second tight end, Foster Moreau. That's an interesting one. I like Foster, but he's six foot seven. His nickname is Baby Gronk. And I just see the Raiders doing a lot of two tight end sets. And moving on from Foster doesn't make a lot of sense for me. No, no disrespect to Nick Bowers. No disrespect to Jacob Hollister. Sure, maybe the Raiders decide to go ahead and draft a tight end. They've been bringing in some guys, but uh, no, I don't, I don't think Foster Moreau helps. So what we're going to be doing, we're going to do another mailbag here. And if you guys want, rumble after hours here on today's show. So the link is below. We're going to be going live over on rumble. So rumble.com slash Raiders Porter. 
we're all actually, we're already live on Rumble, excuse me. Um, we're just going to do an extra show over on Rumble once this is over, and it's going to be around five crazy trade ideas that the Raiders go ahead and they do to try to get in the first or second round. So we got back-to-back -back $20 soupy soups from my guy David Zahn, and every 20 that we get from here on out, let's keep the party going. So some fireball for y'all, fireball for y'all. Ooh. All right, I'm ready. <clears throat> Whew. I haven't had Fireball in a little while. That hit me. That burned a little bit. I've been trying not to drink so much Fireball. I know. It's crazy. Free agency. Free agency kicked my ass a little bit, and uh, it uh, it slowed me down. So, But shout out to you all on the Fireball shots there, David Zahn. You're always ready to the party. Uh crazy stuff so all right guys what we're going to be doing here super chat to get featured in our last mailbag or you can go ahead and you can use hashtag raiders to go ahead and do so hashtag raiders or super chat to get your questions your comments featured here on our last mailbag we're going to go ahead and we're going to be answering these for the next 12 to 15 minutes Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Board, and if you haven't already, subscribe for the latest news and rumors. Subscribe for more Raiders content because we're your one-stop shop. Also, friendly reminder, this was filmed on Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Pacific. Let's go to the first one coming in here from Michael Avilia, and I just saw David Zahn. All right, man, you want, you want more fireball? We'll give it to you. Round three, should we get a defensive tackle or offensive line? I see the Raiders going with best player available. And if it means that that's a defensive tackle, you go out and get a defensive tackle. If it's an offensive line, you can go out and get an offensive line. And I'm not going to sit up here and say you got to go with biggest need because that's bit the Raiders in the ass before. I'm going to go ahead and say best player available. Let's go to Derek. Carr doesn't panic in the pocket. There's a reason he's rated like second in the league under pressure. He does panic in the pocket, though. Like, Carr's good under pressure. I'm not trying to say that he's not good under pressure. I'm simply saying every single NFL quarterback more than likely panics under pressure. And I've watched Derek Carr, and I'm not saying I watch more football than anyone here, but I watch every single Raiders game. I watch every single snap, and I go back and watch it. Carr panics under pressure. Doesn't mean he's not good under pressure, but he panics when he sees it in his front of his face. But uh, appreciate the super chat. Let's go to Ronnie Smith. Hey, Mitch, it's my baby girl Zuri's first birthday. Can Raider Nation give her a big Raiders? Side note, how is Dan Snyder still an owner of an NFL team? I don't have a good answer on Dan Snyder for you. I think it's only a matter of time before he ends up selling it, um, just simply because, let's be real, he's a, he's a piece of shit, and I'm not afraid to say it. So, but everyone, let's give Zuri, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, a special, special happy birthday because, like we said, it's... It's womb to the tomb, and then you're, she's her first birthday. You're raising her the right way. So, everyone, HBD down in the comments. Raider Dangerfield, Katie, appreciate you. My opinion, I'll watch him. Thank you for raising your daughter as a Raider fan, and appreciate the fact that uh, she's tuning in right now. So, if you want, how about this, Ronnie? I'll make you do. You send in the super chat. It's up to you, obviously. But uh, take a picture, maybe your daughter in some Raiders gear. Maybe you're holding her, and I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll put you guys on a Raiders sports show. Just DM it to me on Instagram at MitchellRens365. I think that'd be pretty cool. If you guys want more news, rumors, draft content, free agency trades, you want it all, well, I got you covered here. So hit that subscribe button. Turn on those notifications. And this show is built on the back of just the most dedicated fans in the world. So shout out to Michael, L. Raider, Edward Lewis, Mario, Jack Kennan. Raider Brandon, David Zahn, Christopher Leonard, Dolmite X. Y'all are the real ones. Tell your friends to subscribe as well. Take that link that you see below, youtube.com slash Raidersport, and send it to some people. Send it to some people. I want to continue to grow this thing. Let's go to, <laughs> this is a made-up name. Mary had a little Raider. Somebody's punking me right now. Hey, man, so the Raiders could have interest in Dylan Moses. He was a projected first-round pick in 2020. Before Dylan Moses sustained his knee injury, he was projected to go in the first round. He's a, he was a linebacker out of Alabama. However, this has been a name that I've brought up numerous times, and last year was a very popular name also because linebacker was a need for the Raiders. Moses, we just got to be able to face the fact, and it's unfortunate, when major injuries happen to certain guys, 
they take burst out of him. Moses, to me, is not somebody that I would hope that the Raiders show a lot of interest in. And yes, he was projected going round one in 2020. I had him as a six-round projected player in 2021. If you want to bring him in for extra depth, sure, maybe. But to say Morgan Moses would be an absolute guy that you have to go out and get, I think it's a little bit far-fetched to me. Like, if you want to invest in somebody who's got knee issues, it wouldn't be, no, it wouldn't be Morgan Moses. So speaking of the NFL draft, y'all, how excited are y'all from a scale from 0 to 100? I don't know if I'm a, a 100 yet. That's going to be coming up, like, probably the 26th or 27th. But I'm doing more draft content. I'm doing more draft work. And sure, if the Raiders had a first or a second round pick, the excitement would definitely be a little bit higher. Not that I'm upset whatsoever uh, about you know having Devontae Adams. But be honest with me. Let me know your honest opinion. How excited are you for the NFL draft scale from 0 to 100? You need to buy stock in Fireball. David, you're not wrong, my man. We're going to go ahead. We'll take a few of these here. So you send in a 50. I'll round up to 60. That's three shots of fireball. Shout out to David Zahn. Shout out to everyone watching here on the Raiders Report. We're, uh, we're, we might get wild. Hey, if you guys want to party, I'm ready to party. I'm always down to get down. Just remember that. Uh, man. Five minutes in, we're drinking fireball. What's up? Let's go to Dolmite X. How about Abrams a pick or whatever for a right tackle or offensive lineman? So, again, if, an, if I'm an NFL team, and if you want to go at pick for whatever, right tackle or offensive lineman, and free, like, all right, how am I going to explain this? If you trade Abram or if you trade him to a team, you're going to get maybe a fifth or a sixth round pick for him. So you're not going to get a great offensive lineman for somebody like Abram because you also have to go out and pay him if you're the new team. If you're talking about just from a whole other side, like if a team would be willing to trade Abram for a, a right tackle, it's worth a damn. Andre Dillard would be an intriguing prospect to me, the offensive tackle from the Eagles, but you'd also have to throw in something else. Like if it was Jonathan Abram and a fourth-round pick for Andre Dillard, that to me is a little bit more realistic. Safety, though, is not a, that big of a need for, for Philadelphia. Let's go to Vister 30. If a team offered you a fourth-round pick for Cleveland Furrow, would you take it? Yes. And this kind of goes back to my old argument that I talked about in uh, my first mailbag show, which was Trayvon Mould's a good player. If you can get a third-round pick for me, you would do it. Here's the thing, though. A team's not going to give up a fourth-rounder for Cleveland because you have to pay him his contract. And sure, it's not as much, but a team's still going to have to go ahead and pay him $5 million for a guy who barely even played last season. I, if I was the Raiders, I'd say, all right, just keep him on the team. Let's see what he can do, and then he becomes a free agent next off season. I also know Cleveland wants to be a Raider, so I'm hoping that he can get it together. But if you can give me a fourth round pick for him, yes, uh, it's just it's it, it, you're not going to get a fifth round pick for Clee. It's really about as simple as that. So remember, guys, we're live here on YouTube. We're live on Rumble. Let's go to the next one coming in here from Thugalicious. Do you think we're done in free agency? No. I still think the Raiders go out and they make a few moves. Now they might not make a move before the NFL draft. That's definitely a possibility. However, I see the Raiders making a move after June 1st. And if the Raiders make a move June 1st, I'm going to be going live from a bachelor party in Poconos. If you live near the Poconos and you want to come hang out with me and some of my friends, hit me up on IG. We can make it happen. If you haven't already given us a follow over on Rumble, please go ahead and do so. I'm a very competitive person, and I want to have the most Rumble followers out of all the chat sports channels that we have here one of my biggest sells and why you should go over to rumble is it's uncut like i can literally say whatever i want over there and not get in trouble it's even more content but on top of all that if you watch on youtube and you close your phone the show stops just because that's how the youtube app set up if you subscribe to the raiders report or follow the raiders report over there on rumble which you see at the link below you can close your phone and listen to the show like a podcast so whether you're driving whether you're going for a run, whether you're just walking your dog, I think it's a really cool feature. So go ahead, give us a follow over on Rumble, rumble.com slash Raiders Report. What up, Max? Any news on Kyle Van Noy? Unfortunately, no. I've been waiting for a long time to get an update on Van Noy, but I think Van Noy is another player who could wait to see what happens after the draft. Teams are going to be interested in him, especially with his versatility. He knows what value he brings, and he could end up waiting until after June 1st. But even sometimes players like veterans like him, 
end up waiting even longer, kind of like what you saw from KJ, right? Last year, he was like, I don't want to practice in August. I don't want to go through the preseason stuff. Just sign me a week before the NFL season goes, and I'll stay in shape. Cameron Sproul, maybe McDaniel sees Parker as very similar to Trent Brown and thinks he can be coached up. Now, if you look at Brandon Park and you look at Trent Brown, I do not like Trent Brown whatsoever, but Trent Brown's body is a lot different than Brandon Parker. Do I think Parker played better at the end of last season? Yes, I do. Is Parker long, long arms, tall body? Yes, he is. I just, I just don't understand how you can look at your biggest weakness being right tackle entering the offseason and your answer being, okay, let's just keep Brandon Parker there. Like, that one doesn't make sense to me. Let's go face of the Raiders. Could the Raiders try to trade for Nikhil Harry? Nikhil Harry is an interesting option, and Harry was a player that he was drafted in round one from the New England Patriots, remember, out of Arizona State. I think it was in the 2019 draft, if my memory serves me correctly. Yes, what, 31 overall, something. It was late. And now the Patriots just went ahead and they traded for Devontae Parker. So Devontae Parker, I see, as being your potential Nikhil Harry replacement. Here's my issue, though. All the issues that Nikhil Harry has had in the past on every Patriots team that he's been with is the same issues that the Raiders are already currently dealing with with Brian Edwards. So you have Brian Edwards already. I don't see the fit being Nikhil Harry. So I'm going to say no, though I do not see Harry being on the Patriots come start of the 2022 season. If you want to trade for a player, yeah, you're going to have to go out and pay Nelson Aguilar $9 million, But I know Nelson Aguilar has good chemistry and has that speed with Derek Carr, and I'd be much more willing to go ahead and give up something for Nelson Aguilar than I would Nikhil Harry. So if you guys haven't already, go ahead and go down in the comments section and name a player that the Raiders should go ahead and trade for. That's yeah, an extra one from Zahn, and I'm thirsty. Name a player that the Raiders should trade for. <laughs> oh, God. Um, a lot of names out there. What do you think? My opinion says no to Harry. Brian Edwards for Brandon Cooks. That ain't happening. Sorry. Come on. Name a player that the Raiders should go ahead and trade for. I'm going to be looking down in the comments. This next one's coming in from Taj. How much catches do you think Devontae Adams and Darren Waller will have combined? So last season... Waller had 65. The year before that, he had, what, 107. The year before that, he had 109. Devontae Adams last year had 123. I'll say combined Adams, I'll put him at 110 grabs. We'll put Darren Waller at about 85 grabs, let's say. So do the math. I'm not good at it. We'll say a combined 109. Is that, what, 190? What's 85 plus 110? 195, that's my number, 195, that's what I'm going to go with, and some of you are like, well, why are their numbers going down, Derek Carr has always been somebody that spreads it out, you know what I'm talking about, let's go to, uh, speaking of spreading it out, Dick Solid Dixon, Dillard or Lucas, I'll take Andre Dillard, I think Andre Dillard is a better overall prospect than uh, Abraham Lucas, so if you were able to tell me right now, all right, Mitch, you can get Abraham Lucas in round three, at 86, or you trade that third round pick to go out and get Andre Dillard, who was drafted in the first round, number 26 overall, currently with the Philadelphia Eagles, I would actually go that route, and I think some teams would be smarter if they thought of that process a little bit more, like, oh man, I'm giving up a third round pick, however, I, th I don't even think Abraham Lucas is going to fall to round three, so I would much rather me assure myself I'm getting a good tackle and going out and trading for Andre Dillard. If you guys want more content, like I put out a video very similar to a question we just had here on the show of one thing that the Raiders are going to do this year that hasn't been done since 1980. Since 1980, and in fact, it's only been done one time in the history of the NFL. And if you want to go ahead and see what that video is, it's over on Local. So RaidersReport.Locals.com. And if I missed your question, you can always DM me your questions on Locals. And all I'm simply trying to do is put more concentration and more effort on people who, let's just face it, are just going above and beyond to show me that they have my back and can support me in being able to provide more Raiders content. And you can provide more Raiders content. Oh, Jesus, David Zahn. DM me. On locals. Let's go to Bill Holloway. What about Hobbs' legal issues coming up? Possible suspension. Yeah, I know the whole thing with the whole DUI situation happened earlier, and then like two weeks later he got in trouble. I haven't heard anything about it. I don't think Nate Hobbs is going to get suspended. But if something does end up popping up, 
We'll keep you updated. All right, Zahn, you're trying to get me effed up, and it's fine. I'm here for it. Sent one of these in Venmo, too. All right, hang on. Let's check it out. Yep. All right. You guess this is how I get you to drink on Rumble. <laughs> All right, we can drink on Rumble. So here's the thing, though. I, I'm going to need some help. Sam, Sam you, wanna, you want a shot? You got to come up here. Sorry. So Sam's going to come up here. We're going to drink out of the same thing. Hopefully it doesn't bother you. Let's go to Michael. Is it possible that we could extend Carr and get Matthew? Yes. All right, so I owe you one more. You owe me a few. <laughs> um, do I think it's possible? Sure. It just – Derek Carr, his contract this year is going to be very similar to what you see a lot of teams do where it's not going to be that big of a cap hit. It's going to be more, I think, of a signing bonus, and it's going to be some guaranteed money. So when teams usually do that – it usually means that yes, you can still out and go out and get a player. I don't know what I didn't eat. I didn't eat dinner or dinner. I didn't eat lunch today. These fireball shots are starting to hit me a little bit. I'm not gonna lie to you. All right, let's go to the next one coming in here from Robert. Josh is a proven high quality running back. What are the odds of getting better at any position in the fourth round? That you're not. You might not like this answer. But you could see solid running backs slide down in the draft. Like, Brees Hall is a back I like a lot. He could go in round three. Isaiah Spiller, he could go in round three or four. It's just about finding, like, I get it, Josh was taken in the round one, but you're seeing more and more teams go down the draft and being able to find good players later on because running back is an easy position to be able to replace. I get it. I love Josh. But if, I could, if you tell me right now Brees Hall in round four – or Josh Jacobs, I'll take Brees Hall in round four because I know we don't have to pay him nearly as much as we have to pay Josh 8.5 next season. All right, y'all, the Raiders report. Remember, it goes live every single Tuesday, 6 p.m. Eastern time, 3 p.m. Pacific. I'm going to go ahead and take a few more shots for David Zahn, sending in the Venmo, being one of the MVPs today. We're currently at 244 in supers. Whew, it's been a while since we've done a boot. You know what? What you, we're going to go rumble after hours? Do the boot rumble after hours? Yeah, no, you're true. All right, yeah, scratch the boot idea. Sorry. Sunday? Okay, I like the Sunday idea. So Raiders Report is live every single Tuesday, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Pacific. So what's going to end up happening now is we're going to hop on over to Rumble, Rumble only. I got a segment coming up there for y'all. Five trade ideas that the Raiders could potentially do to try to get into round one, to try to get into round two. So if you're interested in that, the show is going to end now here on YouTube. So one second. Let's get a few sips in there before we head on over to Rumble. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do a show exclusively on Rumble. So I get it. The show here on YouTube is about to end. Not going to be a loop. I'm going to go over to Rumble. So if you want to continue to watch the live Raiders show, Go to Rumble right now, rumble.com slash Raiders Report. The link is in the comments. It's in the description of today's video. David Zahn says Sunday doesn't work for me. All right, David, I got you a deal then. How about this? I'll make you a deal, okay? David, you have my Venmo. So you have my Venmo, David. We'll, uh, we'll keep the party rocking here. Yes, we did. I don't know what just happened. So he says Sunday doesn't work for him. Oh, David. All right, hang on. Feeling good in the neighborhood. All right, we're just waiting for Rumble to get picked back up, and then we're going to head on over there. Uh, <laughs> it's, David, you're a crazy guy, man. Oh, boy. Let's do it. So will the Raiders trade up into round one or to round two? Type one for you think that they can get into round one. Type two for you think they can get into round two. Or if you're like, no, they're, not, they're just not going to do it whatsoever, you can go ahead and type two as well. So major shout out to one of the MVPs today, David Zahn. Sunday doesn't work for me. Oh, David, you're a crazy guy. All right, you guys want to shout out now? Go ahead, type one, two, or no. Michael says no. Madman Raider says no. We got D News says no. A lot of no's coming in from Juck, from Chris, from Turlock, Robert. Two, 
294. Yikes. Jeremy Cool Humble. <laughs> Rusty Nail. L Raider 88 says two. So what I'm going to be doing, guys, over on Rumble here in a few minutes, we got to get something set up, and it was a uh, little technical difficulties. It's all good, though. We are going to head on over to Rumble. And I'm, essentially what I'm trying to do is I'm taking the report that you saw from Dave Ziegler about him not being 100% happy, and I'm going to just try to give you some creative trade ideas that the Raiders could do to try to get into round one or try to get into round two. That's what you're going to see here. So that's, that's going to be the show. If you're like, Mitch, you're slurring your words. It's because I'm out of shape. I'm out, of, I'm out of regular season shape. David has just sent in, what? That's like six. Uh, I'm about nine shots deep right now, and I, and I didn't eat before the show. So one of the things that I usually prepare when I do my other shows is I eat food. I was like, ah, we're just going to do a normal Raiders show. I'm not going to drink. We're not going to get too wild. I, I try to be honest with you all. And the, the clear giveaway is always my eyes. My eyes are always usually pretty squinty to begin with. When I start drinking and you see the eyes closing, it's uh, it means it's hitting me a little bit. And, you know, I've seen some people out there in the comments are like, oh, this guy, he drinks apple juice. Let me just say this right now. And for anybody who follows me closely, I love my grandpa to death. And anytime I say I swear to God in my grandpa's life, it means I'm 100% serious. This is not apple juice, okay? If uh, the green screen are lights, they screw everything up because I'm actually not even this white in person. This might surprise some people as well. I'm actually pretty tan. The lights, they light us up a lot. So I know it might look like apple juice, but I swear to God in my grandfather's life, that's fireball. <laughs> like it's uh, And it's kicking my butt here a little bit right now. David says, I'd like to see us picking in the first round. I don't care if they have to trade a future pick in the first in Vegas, this needs to happen. So I actually do have a trade idea that gets the Raiders into the first round, David, which you're not the only person that has said that. And, you know, we got a draft in Vegas, and that's an exciting thing. It's also a lot of money on the line, right? And there's a part of me that's like, man, I wish that the Raiders could obviously have a first round pick. But on top of all of that, you made your big splash. You got Devontae Adams. And the fact that you were able to get Devontae Adams, I'm, uh, I'm okay swallowing the pill of not having a first-round pick in this year's draft. So the fact that Ziegler has said that he hopes to get in there, sure, we'll see what ends up happening. Yes, I get it, guys. We're still live here on YouTube. So here's my question. Will the Raiders trade up into the NFL draft? I want you to go ahead and type your Y for yes, or I want you to go ahead and type your N for no. Also, I see Johnny G, who seems like a – Really shitty person to hang out with at a party. No, I mean, David Zahn says you're welcome, Sam. F Sam. <laughs> Christopher Leonard just subscribed to Rumble. Perfect. We are going to head on over to Rumble. I uh, I accidentally clicked the button, so we, we just got to get Rumble set back up. You're fine, Sam. So once we get set up over on Rumble... We'll go over there, and we'll break it all down. So I see David Zahn's over there, Angry Boomer. You might have to, yeah. We got Nick McBride. I truly believe that Graham will turn guys like Furl, Abram, Gillespie, etc., into viable weapons, Raider Nation for life. So Nick McBride, I appreciate the super chat that just came in. And essentially, guys, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to get everything set back up over on Rumble. And then in the meantime... I'm just going to answer some questions here. We're going to reschedule our live show on Rumble, and then we'll head on over there. We'll do the... Okay. Um, I don't know. Maybe get Brett, get James. I don't know what the deal is. Truly believe that Graham will turn guys. So, Cleland, I do think Cleland's going to have a better year than a lot of people are going to give him credit for. I actually thought Cleveland had a halfway decent season all the way back in 2020 when... He played solid as a defensive tackle. He played solid as an edge rusher. And then you got Jonathan Abram who could play up in the box. I think it depends on how they use him. If they use him as a box safety, sure, he can be a lot more productive. Gillespie is a product or prospect that I'm really curious on seeing how he ends up turning out. No, that was just trying to buy time. Um, out of all three of those guys that you mentioned, I see the person who is having the best year is Cleveland Furl.
because I do think that the Raiders want to get him to work because I also know a lot of like guys like Dave Ziegler, they were higher on Cleveland Furl during the draft process. So Swayze, I see you. Michael Grips never can make the live show because I work nights. Well, hey, we're, we're live right now. I mean, I'm, I'm here. We're not going anywhere. I know a lot of people work nights, and I know the schedule sometimes can get crazy. We might be doing two live shows coming up here in a little bit. David Zahn says, this will help kill time. $20 super. David, you a real one. You know what, guys? While we're waiting for everything to get set up, Okay, so what... All right, guys, so I'm talking to Sam right now. We're trying to work through some things. So what's going to be the plan? And then what? Okay, so this is what's going to happen, guys. We're going to end up ending the stream here on YouTube. And then I'm going to start a new stream over on Rumble. All right, well, give me an answer because this is ridiculous. So will the Raiders trade up in the NFL draft? Why for yes or N for no? David, this is going to help me kill time. Cheers. Again, we're trying to sort things out. I, I don't know what's going on behind the scenes. I've been told we can't go to Rumble yet. We're going to try to go to Rumble, though. Uh, that's I have an sh entire show built for y'all. So we're going to try to kill time here. And uh, if you guys want to send in supers, if you want to drink, you want to have a good time, here's my special deal. Every $10 Super Chat that comes in, we're going to take a shot of Fireball. If we're going to make you guys wait, we're going to have a good time doing it. So shout out to D News, shout out to RCJ Cool, Eric, shout out to Jeff, Jorge Cruz, L Raider underscore 88, Cordy Key, Jose, let me know how you guys are feeling. And uh, we're just going to wait here until we go on, on over to Rumble. The segment that I had designed for y'all is... Um, it's going to be five blockbuster trades that the Raiders could do to try to get into round two or try to get into round one. David Zahn, here's two. You got it. I'm just going to warn you. If you're over on Rumble and I'm slurring, it's on you. <clears throat> David's ready to party. David, how close are you to the Poconos? Just, just comment down below because I'm going to be in the Poconos for my buddy's bachelor party. If you're close enough to the Poconos, David, you have my you have my invite. Where, we'll, we're gonna link up and we're gonna come to my buddy's bachelor party. You you got the invite, David. If you want to come to the bachelor party, June second to June fifth in the Poconos. I know you live in New Jersey. I don't know how far of a drive that is for you, but David says an hour. Um. All right. So you so David, would you be down to do that? Would you would you be down? To come chill with me and my buddies. For one of my best college friends. He's uh, he's getting married in July, but the bachelor party is June second to June fifth. Would you wanna would you wanna come hang out? He said I'm always down. Alright. I'll send you I'll send you the details either after today's live show or maybe like Wednesday or Thursday. Cause I know we're gonna be like bar hopping, we're gonna be doing some different things, so I would love for you to be able to come and uh, hang out with me. and I'd actually love to be able to meet you in person. I, I have never... I think anytime somebody can go ahead and you know support the show that you have, I'd be more than happy to do something for you. So, Tony D says, I'm an hour from the Poconos. If you guys are an hour from the Poconos, I'll probably put something up on the show about where we're going to be on like a certain day and time and whatnot. If you want to come hang out with me and my friends during a bachelor party probably just go have a few beers or something like that my only rule would be this though you'd have to buy the groom the drinks like i know you guys want to buy me a drink but and i'm i would buy you guys a drink but you have to buy the groom a drink is that a fair deal so if you're near the poconos june 2nd to june 5th i'm going to be in the poconos celebrating a bachelor party so if you guys want to go ahead and do that uh we'll absolutely do it uh michael griggs why not take shots of that woodson whiskey i would take shots of woodson whiskey at the bachelor party, unfortunately, I don't have Woodson whiskey here. So, the only Woodson whiskey I had, I drank, which was like, man, that was like six months ago. I took it to Vegas. <laughs> I took it to Vegas, and uh, I was dishing it out to a whole bunch of Raider fans that come and hung out with me. With that. I went to I went to Barcode Burger, had some food, had a few drinks, had a good idea, or had 
just had some good time. Tony D says, I also live in New Jersey. I mean, seriously, the invite will be open to anybody that watches the show that wants to have a good time. It's just my only rule is you guys have to buy the groom a drink. Like, I think that's more than okay, more than fair, more than fair. So, guys, we're live here on YouTube right now. We're trying to sort some things out behind the scenes. And once I get the okay, we're going to end the live show here on YouTube. And then I'm going to go over to Rumble. And I'm going to go ahead and do an extra segment for you guys over on Rumble. So definitely something to just keep in mind over there. So uh, David Zahn, super. He can barely say Woodson whiskey. This is way more fun. He doesn't eat. <laughs> You're right. When, when I don't eat anything and it, it hits me quick, you guys can see... Uh, I take a lot of pride in being able to hold my liquor. And usually before like game days or stuff like that, I eat a lot of food. Like I eat pizza, I eat bread. I try to eat as much as I possibly can. Like I come into shows with a pregnant belly, just ready to just all the alcohol to get soaked up. Today, I didn't eat anything. So I'm a, it's hitting me pretty hard. So what we're going to be doing now, I'm getting word. We are about to go to Rumble after hours. So what's going to happen here is I am going to end this show here on YouTube. We're going to go on over to Rumble where I have an extra segment for you all. And if you guys want to make me drink over on Rumble, I would say hit up the Venmo at MitchellRent365. So every, every, every 10, well, how about that? That'll be the deal, making you guys wait a little bit. To every $10 Venmo. At Mitchell Rents 365 that we get, that's going to be a shot of Fireball, and we might even just finish off this entire bottle. So the live show is going to end now here on YouTube. We are going to go over to Rumble, and then we're going to have a whole show about the top five trade ideas that the Raiders could do to get into round two, to get into round one. I appreciate everyone watching. Go to the link that you see below, rumble.com slash Raiders Report, and join me for our Rumble After Hours segment. Everyone on YouTube, see you later.